Jean Piaget, one of the most influential psychologists of the 20th century, uncovered a surprising truth. We all pass through four dramatic transformations in the way we understand the world. These aren't just small improvements in memory or intelligence. They're fundamental rewrites of how our minds work. Each stage changes what we can see, imagine, and reason about. And once you've moved into the next stage, it's almost impossible to think the way you once did. So, let's see who Piaget was and what these stages are all about. By the end of this video, you'll have a clearer understanding of how your own thinking has evolved and how it might still be changing. And if you find value in this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Jean Piaget was a Swiss psychologist who began his career studying biology but became fascinated with children's reasoning. He noticed that younger children often gave the same kinds of wrong answers to certain questions. Not because they lacked knowledge, but because their thinking followed a different logic altogether. Piaget began to wonder, if children think differently, could the human mind actually go through predictable stages of development? To find out, he spent decades studying how children think and learn, often beginning with his own family, with the precision of a scientist and the patience of a parent. What he uncovered became one of the most influential ideas in psychology, the theory of cognitive development. The insight that our thinking evolves through four distinct universal stages, each one transforming how we understand the world before it reaches full maturity. The first stage begins the moment we enter the world. For an infant, life is all sensation and movement, sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, all raw data waiting to be organized. At this stage, the baby doesn't yet understand that objects exist when they can't be seen. For a newborn, reality is a string of disconnected moments. A rattle in front of them exists now, and then it's gone. For them, it ceases to exist. To you or me, that might seem obvious. But to Piaget, it was revolutionary, because it revealed that even basic reality isn't hardwired, it's built. This concept, object permanence, is one of Piaget's most famous discoveries. In his experiments, Piaget would show a baby a small object, then cover it. For the youngest infants, their eyes would wander elsewhere as if nothing had happened. But as they approached their first birthday, something remarkable occurred. They began to search for the hidden object. The child's mind had quietly constructed a new rule, that the world exists even when it's out of sight. Around the age of two, a child's world changes dramatically. Language takes off. Play becomes imaginative. A stick can become a sword, a cardboard box a rocket ship. But while creativity flourishes, logic is still in its early stages. One of Piaget's key observations here is egocentrism, not selfishness, but the assumption that others see the world exactly as you do. To demonstrate this, Piaget created the famous Three Mountains task. A child is shown a model of three mountains, each with different features. The child views the model from one side, while a doll is placed on the opposite side. When asked what the doll sees, the pre-operational child will often describe their own view, unaware that perspective can change. This stage is also marked by animistic thinking, giving human qualities to objects. The sun might follow you home. A teddy bear might feel sad if left alone. The next leap is the arrival of logic, but not just any logic. Logic you can see, touch and test in the real world. In Piaget's conservation tasks, a child who once insisted that a taller glass holds more water now pauses, thinks and says, no, it's the same. The mind is no longer fooled by appearances. It can imagine the process behind what it sees. Children in this stage can classify, order and reason about concrete events. They begin to understand cause and effect. They can plan ahead. 
but they still need tangible examples to think things through. And in the final leap, the mind escapes into abstraction. Now thinking is no longer bound by what can be seen or physically demonstrated. Teenagers can imagine possibilities, reason through hypotheticals, and debate questions of morality, politics, or philosophy. Piaget called this hypothetical deductive reasoning. The ability to form a hypothesis, mentally test it, and deduce the most logical conclusion without needing to try it in the real world. It's also the age when idealism often flourishes. A young person might question why society works the way it does, or imagine radically different futures. They begin to see not only what is, but also what could be. This stage marks the arrival of metacognition, thinking about one's own thinking. It allows us to step back, evaluate our reasoning, and even reshape the way we think. Piaget's theory of cognitive development has been enormously influential, but later research has revealed important nuances. Some studies show that children can achieve certain cognitive milestones earlier than Piaget proposed. For example, with simplified tasks or familiar materials, younger children have demonstrated abilities once thought to belong only to later stages. Other research suggests that cognitive development may be more continuous, a gradual strengthening of skills, rather than four separate leaps. Cultural and educational contexts also play a role. In communities where children take on adult responsibilities early, certain logical abilities may appear sooner. In contrast, limited exposure to formal education can delay aspects of abstract reasoning. Despite these refinements, Piaget's central insight that children actively construct their understanding through interaction with the world remains a cornerstone of developmental psychology. His work laid the foundation for constructivism, an approach that continues to shape modern teaching methods and research into how humans learn. Piaget's ideas didn't stay locked in psychology textbooks. They transformed classrooms. Instead of treating students as passive vessels to be filled with facts, his constructivist approach encouraged learning through exploration, experimentation, and problem solving. In early childhood education, this means giving children real objects to manipulate and space to ask their own questions. In secondary education, it means challenging students with open-ended problems that demand reasoning, not memorization. Piaget's theory shows us that thinking is not a single skill we're born with. It's a lifelong construction project. Each stage doesn't just add more knowledge. It changes the very framework we use to understand the world. Most of us complete these stages in childhood, but that doesn't mean the process is over. The same curiosity, experimentation, and willingness to question assumptions that drive development in our early years can still shape us as adults. So maybe the real lesson from Piaget isn't just how children grow. It's that we should never stop rebuilding our minds. If you found value in this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And join us on our journey of discovering ourselves, the world around us, and the greatest minds and ideas. Thank you very much for watching.